Hey, what's up, Leo Ron here. Thank you for joining me in today's painting lesson. The big overarching idea for this video would be paint the big, the large shapes, and the rest will fall into place. And I want to show you just how important the overall patterns of light and shadow and the big shapes are, as opposed to what some people may think is the, the, the importance of details. Details are great, they add a lot, they look good, but the real important thing is the overall shapes. I'm gonna prove it and show it to you here. The big shapes we're working here with today are this entire side that's in the shadow and how it connects fully to, where's my pencil, this entire thing and how it connects fully with the car's shadow and the shadowy side of the car and the foreground shadow, right? And then we also will have some kind of a mid value here for the background and then the highlight that's gonna be created in the sky and on the ground is what's gonna help us close that story together and then add a few of the people's details. You don't need much and it will look fantastic. So let's get to it. So as I mentioned, uh, we're gonna focus on the big shapes and again, I'm gonna put the sketch in the description box if you wanna recreate it. Now, it's important to understand before we start working on the big shapes, there are actually a lot of overarching um, connections we can make with an underpainting. So this will be in its essence an underpainting, not a wash where I'm really trying to accomplish a lot, but just to tint the paper. Uh, and notice how long I take just to mix the sky. Uh, if you take one thing from this lesson is really be patient with mixing. Uh, it's just a big part of it. Um, it will take time if you're trying to get a specific nuanced color. Now I did mix in advance enough paint so I don't need to remix. And and this is what's gonna help me carry this even wash all the way through the painting, okay? Uh, so again, we're doing an underpainting. I actually have no reason to jump straight into the shapes because I want to first have something that connects everything. Now, as we get towards the area of the buildings, I am starting to warm things up a bit, but you'll notice that my entire scheme is quite gray. This painting isn't gonna be anything too bright or too shiny. Um, I'm just following the colors I see. I'm not trying necessarily, at, le at least not right now, to push any focal point, okay? It's all about just getting a smooth wash from top to bottom, cool for the sky, warm for the ground. This is pretty much what I'm going for here. Uh, you notice, you'll notice in a second, I will add a bit of yellow to the ground just to make it a little warmer. Um, but the principle is the same. This is actually the easiest stage. You can pre-wet the paper if you want. I'm doing it wet on dry as you can tell because the color doesn't spread out, but you can do it wet and wet if you feel more comfortable. The entire idea is let's tint the paper with some colors that are relatively even in terms of their value. And on top of that, we can start basing our big shapes, okay? This is a pattern I'll often work with whenever I'm doing big shapes. So I have my test paper ready to go and I have this mix. Uh, so I'm gonna start from left to right, top to bottom with that big block of, of buildings, this wall and this uh, building um, with the fence and the trees behind. So look at what I'm doing here. I'm mixing both the pinkish color for the buildings and also the green for the trees. That way I can alternate between two brushes to paint both simultaneously. Now, why would I wanna paint both simultaneously? For the simple reason that I want them to merge into one simple shape. So starting with the building, keep it small. This is an advice I haven't mentioned for a while now. Keep the area you're working on small and controlled. Uh, make sure you got the right color you're after, you got the right value, and then spread it out and open it out. Make sure you have the edges you're interested in. Don't be in a hurry to extend and expand the shape before you're sure you're done. So now I can put in those trees that are a bit more of a green, right? It's, it's still a muted green, but it is a green. And painting around that satellite dish, I'm actually gonna get that line for the satellite dish itself with the green, it doesn't really matter. Colors here are secondary. What you wanna focus on is the big shapes. Now, again, the reason I mixed both the warm and the cool green for the trees is so that I can treat this entire thing as one big shape. And this, getting these shapes in accurately is again far more valuable than the details. What you'll see is as soon as we're done with the first big shape, two sh big shapes, the left buildings and the right buildings, suddenly 
you'll start getting a sense of place and especially point of view. You'll feel, okay, this is where I'm standing. This is where my height is compared to the people. And it's just a great feeling to see these things come together. So moving on, it's not an interesting necessarily stage of the process. I'm just thinking in terms of shapes. Now, I do recognize some coolness and um, and a dark value to the left. So I'm almost breaking the rule of keeping it the same value because you still want to recognize when there's a major change. When there's a major change in value, you want to capture it. But notice how it's still done wet and wet, making it feel like the same shape. It's still one shape. This all is going to melt together and you, it will feel more together than separate. And it's this sense of togetherness that helps. And people often ask me, what's the actual benefit of merging shapes and why not just work on every small shape um, separately? So one benefit is just visually, I like the way it looks. I like when shapes are merged together and I think it does help the viewer focus on what matters rather than being overwhelmed by tons of small fragmented shapes. But there is something to be said about the effectiveness of the process when you're working in big shapes. It's just easier. It's faster to paint. Now, one thing that a lot of people miss and I missed all the time when I was a beginner is I would have a lot of trouble with knowing what I'm going to paint in terms of the area I'm going to cover. So it's very important. Sometimes it's just about preparation. It's just about knowing in advance and telling yourself this is the area I'm going to paint. It will get easier when you have a better grasp of the techniques and water to paint ratio, but a lot of it comes down to a decision. This is the area I'm going to work on. And then you just work on that area. Maybe it's a good idea to have a simple sketch like this one. Maybe it's a good idea to do the cr crisscross lines showing where you're going to fill the areas in. You know, do whatever you need to really visualize in advance what you're going to paint, what area you're going to cover, and it will get easier with time. When I was a beginner, I would just go into the wash haphazardly without knowing where it's going to start, where it's going to finish, where's my stop line. Like here, we get to the edge of the car and the people, that's the bottom edge of this background shape. There's nothing under that, right? Um, so knowing these things in advance will make a huge difference in your confidence in the process and being able to get the result you want, right? It's, it's incredibly important. Now, I am merging some of the people there, whether they're really at the background, if I feel it's uh, proper to have them as part of the background. But you'll notice those three figures that are closer to us, I'm not merging whatsoever. I'm just painting them uh, as I see them into the scene, okay? So that's really important. Now look at the car here. Uh, I just wanted to put this windshield, the, the, you know, the glass of the back. Um, there isn't really a reason to do that necessarily now, but I wanted to get it in. I'm using both a cool and a warm for it. Okay, everything is dry. And now, what are we going to work on? That right section, the second major shape. Now, one thing to take into consideration is value. It's much darker. So I'm mixing a grayish pink purple color, and it has to stand out compared to the shape on the left. Because remember, we're focusing on the large shapes, but we also want each large shape to be separate from the others. You want them to be independent. If we do this with the same value of the shape on the left, a part of having these as two separate shapes is just lost and is useless. Just paint them together if you're going to do the same value, which, by the way, you may decide to do. You may decide to paint all of this as one big shape and then do another wash darker on top. But I decided to work on this this way. Now, notice how I'm playing with purples and yellows. This is a great way to achieve some uh, dynamic feel when it comes to temperature and color uh, and and it's it plays on the warm and cool because the yellow is a little warmer the purple is a little cooler uh, in this context right and now I'm doing wet and wet a part of being able to uh, execute this technique is controlling the wash and I've shown this I have a few videos on advanced wash control um, I talk about this a lot you know if you want to darken if you want to lighten if you want to charge darker paint if you want to lift paint to make things lighter, if you want to uh, smoothen some edges, all of this comes down to technique and it's something you will learn with time. Uh, so watch that video if you feel like that's where you need some strengthening. Now here is something very interesting. What I'm doing right now is merging 
this shape to the right with the shadow on the car and under the car. And to be honest with you, this is one of the things that initially attracted me to this scene, which is very interesting how the car completely merges with the shape to the right. And uh, it may not be as obvious at first, but I think it's a really cool effect. Uh, so you'll notice how I'm working fast enough for these two shapes to merge together. Now, this may come down to personal preference, and you may decide that these are two separate shapes, which is perfectly okay. To me, I love that look of merging those shapes together. Okay, and I'm also giving the tail lights a bit of treatment here, um, dark with a darker red. So I'm using Chromacrylon Rose, which is a red, um, and and putting that, pouring that in. Now I have to always be aware that this wash is starting to dry, so I'm picking up the paste and I'm gonna paint it all the way down. The ground is gonna stay as light as it is. Okay, the sky is gonna stay as light as it is, even though it could be darkened probably a smidge. Um, but this is the establishment of the two big shapes here. I am fixing a bit of the, you'll see, I'm doing a bit of wet and wet with very thick paint. This is where technique comes to play. You have to know that now that when the paint is like 60% um, uh, wet, not 100% wet, 60%, you have to come back with very strong paint. Uh, and I will fix that edge. That wobbly edge drove me crazy. And I'm lucky enough to be able to fix that in time with a bit of a stronger color. You'll see this in just one second. Uh, but this is, and this is important to understand. Right now, we're like 70, 80% done with the painting. This was the hardest part. Um, this was the, the most difficult um, stage of this painting. Okay, the rest is cakewalk, really. The, is it a thing, cakewalk? Can you tell that? Here's the car zoomed in. Uh, the people, you know, all of the small details, that's just secondary. What's more important is what we've done so far. Trust me, it's gonna work out really, really nicely. Um, so, I'm one thing I forgot is to put the shadow under the car, make it darker. It's a bit hard to see that nuance in the video, but it should be a little darker. And what I'm doing is actually going back while it's still wet, because I used a very wet wash, strong, so a strong value, but still quite wet. There was a lot of water in it. Uh, and I'm doing these little modifications, so to speak. Um, the uh, windshield also looked a little too uh, light, so I'm darkening it. Then I regret it. So I come back with a bit of water to lighten back up. I remember everything I did here really well. Um, you remember mistakes uh, as much as you, even better than victories, let's say. Uh, but yeah, so now it's time to work on the third Element. So we had the shape on the left, shape on the right, and now we're working on the people. The people are going to be a nice complementary to the building on the left, on the right, especially. The building on the right is going to stay quite vague and quite um, uh, kind of unclear because it's a shadow. Okay. Um, so to contrast that, uh, we we are using a bit more of a detailed left area, uh, which I think is a really really cool effect. Um, and a really good balancing act, okay? Uh, it just is gonna balance the entire thing together in a very neat way. Um, now, I'm skipping through some parts here, I'm jumping ahead in some, you know, if I'm just doing a very basic uh, technique of filling in the areas, I'm not, I'm not gonna um, go into too many details where it's not really uh, as necessary, but just you get the, the general idea here. Now, some, like the shirt, the light part of the shirt, I'm gonna come back later and darken it, okay? So it's it's not done, I'm not done with this person. Uh, but yeah, I am going through all of the uh, very basic stages uh, of mapping the shadows and the, and, the, uh, and the lights. It just looks very dark. I don't know why, because maybe the paint is wet. It's gonna dry a little lighter, trust me. Uh, and I'm gonna connect this person to the shadow underneath and to the person to the left. Uh, and I'm just gonna make a whole bunch of connections here uh, because I am still looking for, what's the big idea of the painting? The big idea isn't here's every individual person. The idea is here's the focal point, here's the supporting actors, we have a foreground with the people, we have a middle ground with the buildings and a background with the buildings that are farther, right? Um, so everything kind of plays its role and that's a very effective way of doing things. And talking about being effective, uh, as you see, I'm completely connecting black for the uh, shirt, red, then blue, everything together. Um, 
this is, again, a lot of it is effectiveness of the process. Now, what's interesting, the figure on the left, I uh, actually recognized a lot of interesting colors and nuances there. So you'll see me in the next couple of minutes um, revisiting some areas and improving them. Uh, it was really important for me to get the kind of correct impression, I guess, uh, because it's so close to us as the in, in terms of the point of view. And it's a very prominent part of the painting. Now, I'm, I'm also breaking a cardinal rule, quote unquote, of not including something so, I guess, focal pointy so much to the edge of the painting. But this just goes to show you, you can break these rules freely. It's more about the overall context of the painting. And every painting is a unique individual case. It depends on the execution, a lot of it. And I am keeping things simple where necessary, right? So the shirt is, is really combined with the shorts. Uh, and I'm going to revisit this uh, wet and wet to bring in some more details. Sorry for the shaky camera. Um, so you see, I'm doing this. Uh, I am adding more details. But it is pretty much wet and wet. So um, it's still keeping, again, this is why I said it's all about the nuance and, and everything is a balancing act for everything else, okay? Now, the taxi annoyed me a bit because I feel like it just needs to be more yellow and I missed that. So very similar to the process I did with the uh, boat on the beach, I'm just covering it with yellow paint. This is just something you have to do sometimes, just glaze over it. And I'm lifting a bit of the right side to keep it light. Uh, and then I'm uh, going back and addressing uh, this guy's shirt. And we're gonna go into a little intermission. I'm gonna explain some stuff. So here's what's important to realize. At this point, the painting is done. This is the hard part. And you saw me really taking my time with this shape and then this shape and then the people the details are complementary to these shapes from this point onward and you saw this come together you see how you get a sense of place a sense of a point of view you know if you're um high up your point of view is high up or lower it's it immediately anchors you this kind of a shape okay that's the hard part and that's the most important part the rest from this point onward it's just details the painting could do without them but it could not do without the things we have right here now sometimes you may be at this stage and you don't really see it my suggestion is take a step back take a break from the painting process come back to it later you might be surprised and say whoa okay i can see this now or alternatively go over the overall values of your shapes and figure out if something is terribly off okay if something is really like let's say this entire thing was too light or this entire thing was too dark it will throw off the impression but if you're just missing a few points to focus on like for example the car at the back or some people that's nothing that's going to come with the details we're going to add from this point onward so let's get to that so as I mentioned, now we'll, uh, I'll provide a few more things for the viewer to uh, look at. Most of these are just going to be details. The, the one real exception is the car and maybe some of the shadows that are like a bigger element. Okay. Now, the reason they can fall into the right context is because our process was very big shape oriented. Once we have those in, we can start deciding in a very self-aware way what else we're going to add there. So even though I'm adding a whole new shape, which is the car, I could have just not edited it. Honestly, I could have just not included it. Everything would have been fine. Um, the painting is done. It's like 95% done. So now we're just going to add those little details and things for the viewer to look at so that people uh, who, who aren't as experienced or don't paint themselves will think, oh, this is really cool how you get all these details in when in fact, that's the easiest part. That's the easiest technique. It's like drawing, right? Take some time to learn to master the brush. Uh, but once you do, this is really simple. Um, I do have a lot of changes you'll see soon um, in terms of adding more opaque paint and making things pop a little. We will do some modifications and, and things will look really cool near the end. You'll see. Um, if there's one feedback at this stage I can give myself for this painting is be more deliberate with saturation. So think more in terms of what do I want to look a little more saturated and what do I want to be a little more muted. That's the one thing I'm lacking. Sometimes when you're just trying to match the color you see, uh, you can lose a bit of um, a bit of the intentionality of 
where's the front, where's the back. I do have that in terms of very organized shapes, uh, very organized elements, but now I could have, and I splashed some paint there on the sky. Uh, what could be a death sentence to some people, I just wipe away real gently. I used a tissue that's a little wet, just touched it and then lifted with another dry piece of tissue. It's not the end of the world. It's even not as visible in the in the real life painting. It's more visible here. So now it's time to add some details and I'm, I'm freely working with opaque paint. I love it. So if you look at this person, there's a highlight on the forehead and on the nose. And then once I add back the glasses that were kind of lost uh, in the previous wash, look at how much character and, and detail it gives the face, right? Um, so now I'm bringing back some highlights on the car and we're not done. We're gonna add a few more later on because they're really sharp and I missed that. Again, I missed the strong highlights as well as some of the more saturated yellows. Uh, I don't think I'll be able to recoup that or recover that back, but it's okay. Um, and some details to focus on on the building on the right, some details in the trees. Um, Again, a lot of it is just the bare minimum. Some of the bricks on the ground, just the bare minimum to have some details to look at. Again, the beauty, everything comes from the overall big elements. I uh, added a bit of that hair, the blonde to the hair, which I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna add more details to this figure. Uh, and now we're, we're really adding the highlights to the car, very gently with a very small brush. Uh, just to make sure it's punchy enough. That's what I was missing. A few random figures here and there. Uh, and we're done. I'm going to sign this, remove the tape for you, and hopefully that process makes sense and was teachable and entertaining. So I hope this video was an enjoyable and teachable experience for you. And when you look at the finished product, and I actually took a break, uh, came back, and now it looks amazing to me at least. Uh, when you look at the finished product, again, it's very easy to see all the details. And sometimes people looking from the side, they ask that, that, that aren't painting themselves. Uh, they're uh, looking at this and wondering how could someone paint all of these details. Now there is of course some technique that goes into this. There is a lot of skill, a lot of practice. But at, at the essence of it, what you're seeing first and foremost is the big patterns of the painting. And only then you see the little details, right? Uh, of course, your mind may jump straight into looking at a detail, but the thing that registers, there's a very direct uh, connection with our eyes and our brains. The thing that registers first is the overall thing. Uh, and so I would recommend if you really want to improve, Try and think about things in terms of the big shapes you can make use of. It will just make your life a lot easier too because it simplifies the result. And then as you improve and as you get better, what you can slowly learn to do, and let me hold it up so you can see a bit more of the details, what you can slowly learn to do is control that like a volume knob. Do I want more details or I want less details? Where do I want more details to be? Where do I want fewer details to be? What types of details am I including? Is it a, a contrast in values? So I'm going with darker shapes. Is it a, a brighter color? Maybe this red and the yellow. Um, and, and you can play around with it and just create something beautiful. So I hope this was helpful. If it was helpful for you, be sure to check out the Frustration Free Watercolor course. It is time to solve all of your watercolor problems. Set yourself free, learn to paint, let the paint do its thing. Highly recommend you check that out. If you feel like you're already there and you're struggling with getting a realistic impression, now's the time to learn how to create realism. It's actually not as hard as you think, so I'm gonna link the watercolor realism course down below as well. And I will catch you in the next vid. Until then, take care and keep painting.